Hello everyone. In the application of thermodynamics, our next topics, there are several topics. These are ideal solutions, equation of state, standard state in solids and liquids. So let's start from ideal solutions. So what is the physical definition of ideal solution? A solution where there is complete uniformity of the cohesive forces is called an ideal solution. Actually, what is cohesive force and adhesive force? Adhesive force must also be mentioned here. Uh, if there is intermolecular attraction force among the similar type of molecules, then it is cohesive force and it is, if it is a different type of molecules, then it is adhesive force. Now if this intermolecular attraction force is similar, or same, numerical same, then the solution formed would be an ideal solution. Okay. Now suppose you take two constituents in this regard, A and B, they are forming an ideal solution. So in at what condition they are forming ideal solution? The intermolecular forces should be equal. What are the intermolecular forces? Here, A is attracting A. This is one cohesive force. B is attracting B. This is another cohesive force. And A is attracting B. This is an adhesive force. So these three forces, intermolecular forces, are equal. In that situation, the solution must behave ideally or it must be called an ideal solution. Now we have to just have some uh, uh, just uh, data these data are uh, over number of moles is n and this is contributed by both the solvent and the solute if one is taken as the solvent another was this uh, one is the solute or both are constituents uh, one is present by n1 number another is present by n2 number and their corresponding mole fraction mole fraction of a is n1 by n and b is n2 by n that is x1 and x2 x1 is the mole fraction of a and x2 is the mole fraction of b okay this is just data we just keep you keep them in our mind in in, in our next uh, discussion this data would be utilized Achha, p1 p1 is the vapor pressure of solvent within the solution p10 is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent okay that means when a is pure then its vapor pressure is p10 and when a was uh, within the mixture then its vapor pressure is p1 similarly for b also when it is within the mixture it is p2 its vapor pressure and when it was not within the mixture when it was present in pure state the solute or b whatever you say it is p20 okay and as i've said x1 and x2 are the mole fractions of a and b here if you regard a as the solvent and b as the solute then there that of the solvent and the solute x1 and x2 are the mole fractions an ideal solution must follow the characteristics. So what are the characteristics of an ideal solution? Not only their definition, they should have some aspects. The free energy of mixing must follow this rule, okay, for ideal solution. For real solution, this rule is sometimes not maintained, okay. So if there are i number of components, uh, so their free energy of mixing delta G mix must follow this equation energy sum over I xi ln xi and similarly the entropy of mixing uh, has formula we have all determined them this formula we just derived this formula in the previous class this one and the uh, um, previous one of the previous class of uh, we determined this value delta S mix x minus nr sum over I xi ln xi okay so these two equations are actually applicable for ideal solutions not for real solutions okay and uh, two more features are their um, volume of mixing and as well as their enthalpy of mixing must be zero so these two are very important characteristics if there is no volume change then it's an ideal solution if there is no enthalpy change that is no heat is evolved nor any heat is absorbed then it is also an ideal solution okay so these four are the characteristics which are to be followed by an ideal solution Okay, and finally, the Raoult's law and the Henry's law must be obeyed over the whole range of concentrations. Okay, so at any range of concentration, the Raoult's law must be followed, the Henry's law also followed. And uh, if they follow these two laws, then for if it's a bicomponent solution, that is, it is only composed of A and B, then this is the Raoult's law. This, this is the mathematical form of the Raoult's law. Okay. P1 is X1 P10 and P2 is X2 P20. So this Raoult's law uh, is followed by these equations. Okay. So that's all about the ideal solutions. Now move on to our second topic, which is e the equation of state for all substances. You know the equation of state for an ideal gas, which is equal to PV equal to NRT. But is that equation applicable for a real gas, or is that uh, it is applicable for a liquid 
as well as for a solid no so we should make an equation of state for all substances which are which is applicable for all substances all the real gases the liquids and solids also uh, these equations can be applied and this is derived thermodynamically as follows so we know the fundamental equation of thermodynamics d u equal to t d s minus p d b so let's start from there and uh, by making uh, just uh, divide both sides by de del v and keeping t constant this relationship can be obtained so d u by d v okay since it is uh, uh, at at a partial condition that is the temperature ma uh, made constant so it is becoming del u by del v okay so d del v is coming below del s here and here dv is cancelled by dv so only minus p is left behind here now rearrange this line so p becomes equals to this one now p equals to t into del p del t v instead of this one you are putting this one where did you get this relationship you got this relationship from the maxwell's relations try to imagine try to remember this relationships del s del v t equals to del p del t v isn't it so from the maxwell's relations so we are, you are mentioning this here you are putting this this equal to this instead of this you are writing this one from the maxwell's relation so that's way and this part the second part of the right hand side of this equation uh, remains the same that is del u del v t and this way you get this equation number a so this is one of the equations of state for all substances okay we have another equation we can approach from here also to in order to get another relationship which would be applied for all substances as the equation of state this is dh equal to tds plus bdp earlier we have used du equal to tds minus pdv but right now the this one so divide both sides by dp then impose the condition of constant temperature this way the d values become del that means there there would be the partial differentiation so del h by del pt equals to t del s by del p t plus p okay so what we have done i repeat here divide both sides by dp then impose the condition of temperature constancy and hence you would get this type of relationship now rearrange this relationship likewise this v equals to minus t into ds by dpt plus del h by del pt now apply the maxwell's relation the maxwell relation is what instead of this we we have we know del b del tp minus del s del pt equals to del b del t p so we are just putting this value we, this way we, we are getting equation number b this is another equation of state so equation a and equation b are the thermodynamic equations of state which are related to the variables pressure volume and temperature of all the systems okay and along with that only v and h values would be required isn't it so these equations a and b can be applied for all substances so the importance of this equation are that they can be applied to the systems at any state such as solid or liquid or real gas under all conditions okay so that's all about our second topic of today and finally the last slide the choice of standard state of solids and liquids the standard state of liquids and solids is simply the state of the pure substance subjected to a total pressure of 10 to the power 5 pascal or 1 bar or 0.987 atmosphere for your information let me say that earlier this pressure value had been 1.01325 into 10 to the power 5 pascal that is one atmosphere but right now recently IUPSC has changed this standard pressure to one bar which is actually equal to 0.987 atmosphere or 10 to the power 5 pascal okay and the temperature what about the temperature temperature must be uh, same the uh, for most elements the reference point of delta f 0 uh, delta h 0 f is 0 that is the standard heat of formation which is defined for the most stable allotrope of the element such as graphite in case of carbon that means what that means you have to take the enthalpy of formation at standard state to be zero but for which one suppose one uh, uh, some elements may have different types of allotropes suppose oxygen oxygen has three types o atom o2 molecule and o3 molecule 
among which O2 is the most stable one. So O2 has delta H0 F0. This is to be taken. This way you can choose this value. Carbon. Carbon has lots of allotropes, but graphite is the most stable one. So this would be assigned delta H0 F0. In case of tin, the beta of tin or the beta of haze or the white tin is taken to be the most stable one, uh, one. Or in case of sulfur, it should be the rhombic sulfur. There are two types of sulfur, rhombic and monoclinic. But rhombic sulfur is the most stable and in, for that delta H0 for rhombic sulfur is taken to be zero. So these are the uh, uh, choice of standard states for solids and liquids. So that's all for today's topic. So thank you. Have a nice day.